Welcome back, Kauai. We're going to introduce you to one of the candidates for Kauai County Council. Her name is Felicia Cowden. We caught up up close with Felicia and we asked her, first of all, why are you running for Kauai County Council? And of course, most importantly, what makes you feel that you are qualified to have one of the seven seats on our Kauai County Council? Well, I'm glad that you asked that. Actually, I've done a lot of different things in the time that I've been an adult. And uh, I started my life off as an engineer. I studied engineering and I worked at a corporation called Intel. They make microchips and I actually love that job. So I understand what it is to have a, a job for a big international company that feels good and is uh, fun to work at and invigorating and well paid. So I understand that element of it. I moved to Kauai in 1984 and I left all that behind when I was 21 years old. And since then I've had a really diverse experience of what I've done. The biggest thing I would say that I've been involved in and most people know about me with is 18 years I had Hanalei Surf Company. And so I got a wonderful experience of what it is to be in small business. And it was a successful business, still is a successful business. But it gave me insight to the needs and the, of the people, certainly the customers, very much what it is for an employer and the working class person that comes at relatively uh, entry level wage, how hard it is to find housing, how difficult it is to be able to pay for insurance. And so I worked very, very hard in that time on different boards. I was the president of the Kauai North Shore Business Council and many with the county for a lot of different issues like uh, the boating issue, the Workforce Investment Board. I was even the chair of the, the, the council, the youth council for the county. Lots of school boards. So I did many years of working with state and local government trying to make life work for both me as a small business owner, my family, uh, my employees, my customers. Having moved beyond that time in my life, I've focused even heavier on community building. And a big piece, I did a, a school called Akamai Learning. This year, I'm, I'm only running for council, but for the past five years, I've done alternative middle school, where I take kids, help them learn centered around their passion. And how do we keep our kids on point, empowered? We have too many people who end up in jail, on drugs, different problems. If we center their learning around their passion, it works, that's been my, my big motivation. But what's been really great where I've gotten an opportunity to learn, we do a lot of leadership learning in that and we learn all about our different infrastructures. We go to different big agriculture companies to from cattle to everything, certainly sewage treatment, the landfill. It's been a wonderful opportunity for me to actually learn right alongside the kids. So we have that one aspect of our learning, but side by side with that, we've been really blessed with places like Waipa, Limahuli, uh, the National Tropical Botanical Gardens, many other places where we learn about, you know, the native Hawaiian way of la managing the land, the Ahupua'a land management system. So we have a comparison and contrast, because how do we build a good future for these kids, for Kauai. We look at the economics, we look at the world issues that are coming forward at us. Really, the whole globe is sharing our same challenges that we have here. So I learned a lot in that time period, but in that, I took a permaculture course, brought me into agriculture because we learned how to provide our own food, how to grow it, and it was amazing how well and quickly we were successful when we used the Southeast Asian plants and the Hawaiian plants, the Polynesian plants, that are meant to grow here like a bad weed. And it was really life-changing to see how possible it is to um, feed ourselves, to need a whole lot less money, to need a whole lot less reason to get in the car. And then amazingly, we went from two cans of garbage a week to less than a half a can, and that was with 12 students. So I believe that there's so much possibility that happens. I have one other element that's been a big part of my learning process, and that is I'm a public affairs programmer for Kauai Community Radio, KKCR. And the show that I inherited is called um, Kauai Soapbox. And on Kauai Soapbox, that's the place where people call up with their concerns. We also bring up projects, but it ha gives me extra reason for going to the council meetings, to be going to the um, public hearings on water, land, infrastructure, 
um, Hawaiian affairs, many, many different issues. And so I, I listen, I try and find the common ground, bring people from different sides of that story to come in and talk about it. And so actually, I've been having a great time campaigning. But it's felt a lot like doing the show. I'm off the air, by the way, right now, because it would be um, too much of an advantage to be doing that. But it's just like kind of doing the show without having a, a final exam at the end of the week. I, I don't have to bring everybody in and sit and talk story about it, but it is a continuation of what I've already been learning. So I feel like collectively all these things, plus you know I'm, I pay very much attention to what's going on in the state, I go over for um, testifying. I understand how state and local government work together. I feel very, very confident that I can do this job. And right now, there is what I consider a crisis that's happening. And it's shared across the world. And we have this big uh, disparity between the rich and the poor. And we've got good people on each side. We've got a lot of good people on this island. But we're not coming together very well. And I feel like I can bridge that. And that's, that's, um, that's the right experience that I feel like I have for this job. You know, Felicia Cowden, interestingly, I think the viewing audience can see that you've talked about a, a whole big array of not just your experience, but about issues on the island of Kauai. And that's interesting because in any political race, it's not a one issue campaign. You can't campaign. Anybody can't campaign on just campaign on just one issue. So what do you see as the core problems and the related so solutions perhaps to those problems? Well, I think the core problems is really, it, it comes to a global economy. This, ha this is what's happening all over the world, is that we have moved away from what was regional strengths around the world, where we have cultures that have the right ideas on how to manage their land, how to manage their resources. Everything's being eclipsed, and frankly, we're all at fault. It's not like this person's guilty, that person's guilty. We all want convenience. We want to have an easy meal. We don't want to sit there and go out and cook it and create it, and or not everybody does. So we've become over-dependent. But what's happened is that we are attracting world interest. Big companies come here, whether it's for vacation, agriculture, the military, many others, and even just very, very wealthy people who come here for uh, vacation. I mean, long vacation, living. And it, it pushes up all our housing prices. And so the effect is, is people who've lived here for generations, many of whom prefer a simple life, many of whom don't need to have a lot of sophistication that doesn't mean something to them. They want to surf, they want to hunt, they want to live life in a natural way. Well, they can't compete for their housing. We're being pushed out. That's, that's, that's very critical. And I, what I see happens as a result of that is fatigue, sometimes behavior that ends up bringing people into jail. We really have transitioned into some gnarly drug use, and that's a problem. We have to take care of it. And I see that as really an expression of what's happening and not the problems that are facing this island. So we have to take care of our people, and we have to take care of our environment. In the same way, we've begun to exhaust our environment. When uh, the Hawaiian people were here, they had no option, so that, that was prominent. They took care of the land to the, to the point where people would lose their lives if they abused it too much. But now we don't work with the maintenance of watershed to ocean. So even our reefs are in a lot of distress, and it's really easy to blame, and it's hard to solve. So I don't want to pretend like I have every solution, but what I do have is an independent mind. I have been um, able to take care of myself at, uh, I feel blessed, I'm not wealthy, but I'm able to take care of myself and work building community without having a job, an outside job. So I don't have an employer that I'm beholding to. And I don't have a mindset that needs to really be looking after the interests of anybody other than the people on the island. So a vote for Felicia is a vote for independence. Because when I look at our world issues, we need our governments to control and support industry and, and not the opposite. Pretty much 
industry often controls and maybe supports a community and the government but but I'm I'm for you know resilience I'm for whatever we can do to build our economy here where people have the freedom to have their own little business that they don't have to worry about being overtaxed for doing something small out of their home we have to look at this we have to listen to everybody's viewpoints but um, I think that that we can do that and what I've seen with my own uh, gardening and I'm looking at you Dickie and you're on the same page as me and I see it all over that's the thing I see I see that there are individual and nonprofit organizations all over this island doing wonderful things and really individual sovereignty begins with food independence and we can strengthen ourselves it's like preparing for a hurricane whatever comes at us we're ready if we know how to fix our own tools rather than throw them away if we know how to educate our own children if we know how to grow our own food and we can share and the beautiful thing is our kupuna they have this knowledge still and we're getting to this time where we're about to lose that generation and we need to take our kids our keiki combine them with our, our kupuna and we need to be learning it ourselves and I think that like when visitors come that's what they want. They want to see the Vahipana, the sacred places, respected. They want to come to a place that looks like Hawaii and Kauai. And they, they're happy to see what we would call heritage tourism. They're happy to see agritourism, ecotourism. I think that we can support our visitor industry, make it stronger without making it broader. And you know really have a lot of aloha for our visitors they bring us very much but we need to keep it all in balance they want to come and see Kauai a place that is vital and strong they're not coming to see us serve them so I think that our visitor industry does a really good job at working to keep Kauai seeming independent and I think that they can be our partners in strengthening that aspect. I think that really all of us have the same intention, but when we're looking at our real property taxes and challenges like that, we need to cap what we're going through right now and hold it so we don't push people off the island, but then we look, need to look at all our priorities and look at what are we encouraging, how we're gonna finance things, how we're gonna take care of our infrastructure without, you know, like, building everything up so nice that we can never afford it. I'm really concerned that we have this $188 million of debt that we didn't have very long ago. We're up to $179 million of um, government costs. And when we look at that, we have less than 70,000 people. How do we pay for it? And when the state and the federal government's in the same place? So, you know, I will be honest, there's gonna be some hard choices. We're gonna have to work harder. That's everybody. And we're going to have to work a little bit more efficiently. And we're going to have to work smarter. But I, I believe, like what I've seen in my own life, 10 years ago when I had my business, I had a lot more income. I had actually five times as much income as I do now. And I live at a level that would be considered below the poverty line. But my life is rich and abundant and I'm able to do what I want and help the community the way that I want. I have healthy food to eat. I feel safe and I feel happy. And I feel like if I can do this, so can Kauai. And we can model our business plan that way. We don't have to follow the beat of the international drummer. And I think around the world, everybody's waking up to this. So I actually have a lot of enthusiasm for our future. And I believe it's really good. Well, thank you for this opportunity. And I want to thank the community that has yet to know me, that has shown me so much aloha. Kind of basically in that area, Wailua Bridge South and all the way to the west, I've been exposed to so many uh, fresh ideas and interests. And I've had warmth and aloha that has come to me, and I extend it right back. And um, I just want to say that I feel 110% ready to be able to do this job. And I humbly ask for your support for one of your seven votes for Kauai County Council. I would welcome anybody to call. Uh, my number is 652-4363. Again, 
652-4363. And if you'd like to know more, you can visit my website, which is www.feliciacowden.com. So 652-4363, you're welcome to call me. Thank you so much. I need one of your votes.